So here is a little guide I threw together, mostly for my guild, but I figured I would go ahead and publish it in case there's people out there who are a little bit worried about Ancient Inheritance and how to get the best possible start when this event goes live. Now probably the most important part of this event is right at the start you get to choose a starting relic. These are the three best relics that you can pick. I strongly recommend you go with the War uh, Wanderer's Pipe. The Wanderer's Pipe gives you a boost to EXP just from exploring, and that's important to level your team up so that you can get your class bonuses higher. If that's not available, you could go with the Exploration Journal. You're going to wander around more than you're going to use objects, but it's a good alternative. And my third choice would be the Wooden Spatula. It gives five provisions. I know the screenshot says three, but they've buffed it to five this season. That's basically one extra fight or five extra steps or using an extra chest, so it's not a terrible option. Let's talk about heroes for a minute. One really nice thing about Ancient Inheritance is it doesn't care what level your heroes are. Your heroes can be three star, unawakened at level five, and they're still considered maxed out for Ancient Inheritance. In other words, all of the heroes you currently see on the screen, once I take them into Ancient Inheritance, they're six star, level 60, fully awakened, and plus 15 mola for the duration of Ancient Inheritance. So, Focus on units you want to take into the fight. Focus on their kits, not on how well geared they are or how well leveled they are. In fact, gear has a minimal impact. Now, gear sets still work. Things like counter set and life steal and speed sets still give their bonuses, but the lion's share of your stats come from class specialization, which we'll get into later. Artifacts also fully work in this, so taking artifacts that do nice things like Infinity Basket or Sword of Judgment or um, Nostalgic Music Box, all of those will work inside of Ancient Inheritance. So don't fret if your units aren't geared or leveled too well, they will still work great for this. This is really important, class specialization. You want to focus on three classes and put all of your points into them. You do not want to be a jack of all trades, master of none. Trust me on this. Warrior is the most important class in Ancient Inheritance. Try to put the lion's share of your points into Warrior. The Warrior's units and diversity and pool and the access to dual attacking is just so good for this. Also focus on healers. If you don't have somebody to cleanse and keep you alive, then what good are your heal healers anyway? For a third class, I would strongly recommend rangers or mages. Mages bring you more damage, but rangers bring you a wider diversity of unique kits, like uh, Cerise with her dual attacks or Isaria with her skill resets. Uh, thieves and knights I just don't think are that sustainable. If you want to put a couple points into them, sure, but I wouldn't go overboard on focusing on those. Do not wind up with a skill set that looks like this, where everybody's got a little bit of stats into them. It'll be fine for floors one and two, but by the time your guild gets to floor three, or God forbid, floor four, your skill enhancements are so low that you're just going to die left and right. You're not going to have the damage or the tankiness to be any contribution to the fight whatsoever. So this is probably the most important aspect of Ancient Inheritance. There are other ways to artificially increase your stat level. One are relics. Relics that boost your class level are probably the most important. The other are the sanctums, which look like these statues, and they're class specific. This one's a ranger one, for example, and triggering that statue will boost your class level. Do not mess with these until at least level three or four, because Raising your own level from level 1 to 2 is easy. Raising it from level 10 to 11 is not easy. So you want to trigger those when you're further down the line and have a better return on investment from using those statues. Speaking of moving across the map, you want to be careful about what you collect. The treasure chests on level 1 and level 2 don't really have great stuff in them. The guild treasure chests only have a few leafs and a couple hundred K gold kind of a waste in my opinion. Would you, I think you would rather have level 88 gear than that. So I recommend don't even bother with the treasure chests until you get at least a floor 3 or 4. At the higher floors, the loot in the chests is better anyway. Visit every scroll that you can find 
and uh, ideally on the, put a note on the map so other guildies know where they are. Those scrolls have really important things in them, like the relics, which are the second most important thing in the game to prioritize other than your um, classification leveling. Uh, they also have provisions and more EXP in it, so those are definitely worth chasing down. Hopefully your guild comes up with a basic strategy. This is ours. It's by no means perfect, but it's what we use. You want to make a beeline for the boss on floor one, looting as much as you can on the way, basically following the magenta paths depending on where you spawned into the floor, and then try to take the boss down, collecting a little bit of loot on the way. Floor number two has two guardians protecting the boss, so depending on where you spawn in, you approach one of the two guardians. Once both guardians are taken down, it'll unlock the central boss, and then you can all use the teleporters to converge on that boss to complete the floor. Floor number three has four guardians, one in each corner, so you'll need to follow the paths to, as efficiently as possible, take out the four guardians, which unlocks the teleporter, which lets you teleport to the central boss to complete the floor. Floor number four is just a much larger map version of floor number three. Again, you've got to take out the four corner guardians to unlock the central boss to complete the floor. Also good to use the note system to let people know which guardian you're heading for. That way when players log into Ancient Inheritance and they take a look at the map, they'll be able to see that, hey, the two bosses I could converge on, one of them has three guildies attacking it and the other one has six. I know which one I need to go and help out on. So all of that can help make for an efficient floor clear. I can tell you this, the guardians are usually gated by mini bosses and the mini bosses have a variety of different elements to them so you want to take a good spread of elements so that you're able to fight these bosses. Uh, most of your stats come from your class enhancements, so having max crit is very rarely a thing. So units that give buffs to crit chance or imprints to crit chance are really nice to take into your team. Uh, units that have self-cleanse passives are really good to take into the team. And units that are self-sustaining units like lifesteal units or um, units on Sigurd Scythe or units with Bloodstone can really help you uh, stay alive in some of the earlier floors. Again, I want to reiterate that gear doesn't matter a lot, at least not the stats that are on the gear. The sets are more important than the gear itself. Speed set, lifesteal set, counter set, and the artifacts, all of those really assist in the fight, but the gear score itself has a minimal impact on your actual stats inside of Ancient Inheritance. So it is more important for you to just throw some gear onto the units that you want to use regardless of their level and take them into the fight. Artifacts also fully work in Ancient Inheritance, so look for artifacts that boost crit chance, that have special effects to them like dual attack artifacts or extra uh, buff artifacts. All these things are really useful for getting you the stats you need or getting you the tools that you need to complete certain fights. I'll try to put a more complete list in the comment section, but really good warriors to take are of course Conqueror Lilius. If you have her, she's a must. She gives buffs, she gives debuffs, she does dual attacks great unit for this. Mercenary Helga is also a fantastic unit. Defense breaks, tons of buffs, she self buffs. Um, Fire Sermia, Luna, Euphine, uh, all these are great DPS units. Sigrid is a powerhouse. You can use units like Camilla and Kitty Clarissa for dual attacks. You'll find that a lot of the fights you'll just want to take two units into them, a dual attacker and a DPS, to be able to rack up a real high score and preserve some of your other units for other fights. Uh, don't overlook units like Alencia and Fire Ken. They're solid, tanky DPS units that have built-in defense breaks. Um, for Soul Weavers, the two most important Soul Weavers are, of course, Tamarin and Achates. Tamarin for her dual attacks, her cleanses, her attack buffs, her, her contributions to the team, and Achates because she is hands down the most powerful raw healer in the game. She cleanses every other round and she heals with both of her skills and she cycles very quickly. 
Uh, Amelia and Singelica are also really useful units. Amelia for her heals, cleanses, and pushes. Singelica for her dual attacks. Other usable healers are units like Momo, Destina, Green Lots, Green Rin, uh, even made Chloe, but don't go overboard with Soul Weavers. You're probably never going to take more than one Soul Weaver into a fight at a time, so you don't want to wind up with so many Soul Weavers that you don't have room for other DPS units. Uh, as for Rangers, I think, especially if you're taking Tamarin, Asaria is probably one of the most important units you can take just for the skill reset shenanigans she allows. Landy is a very high damage output unit who also gives speed buff and pushes. Cerise allows you to do strips and debuffs and dual attacks. Units like Fire Shuri is great for CR manipulation. Yuna is a powerhouse AoE unit. Uh, Bomb Model Kana is one of the better units for this fight. Seaside Bologna is also really good. Mages, you've got a wide variety of damage units. Spectre Tenebria, Malim, Champion Zerato is great with his counters, and Mages can also wear Violin, which allows you to do a lot of strips. Anyway, I hope this video helps you feel more prepared for Ancient Inheritance. If you have any questions about this up-and-coming event, please ask them in the comment section. And if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you could drop a like and subscribe. Have a great one, guys.